welcome to Dow Watch Fireside. Now, this is the first episode of a new series where we interview people who are working or studying or building within the sector of DAOs within cryptocurrency. In this first episode, I'm going to be talking with Hans Koning. Hans Koning is a man from the Netherlands who is studying to become a doctor of DAOs. I'm not sure if he's going to be the first ever DAO doctor, but it's definitely a very interesting conversation. In this conversation, we discuss where he feels DAOs will be in the next bull run, what sorts of things people can do to get involved in DAOs, that includes you, and finally, a very, very interesting question and a very interesting response is, which is his favourite DAO and why? So for all of that and much, much more, stay tuned. DAO Watch Fireside. Hello and welcome to Dow Watch Fireside. I am your host, Cryptosi, and I am joined with by Hans Koning. Hans, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you, uh, Cryptosi. And first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be on your show. Um, I know you are engaged in, as one of the few peoples in Dow's, and I can't wait to delve and dive into the the subject of the DAO. So thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being a guest. Um, As you're going to notice, it might be a bit off-putting, but I'm going to be putting my headphones off and on as we're having some technical difficulties. Me, with my um, extreme tech knowledge, can't quite work this software yet, but let's not let that slow us down. Hans, I really wanted to have you on as my first guest, as you are somebody who has got quite a lot of experience within the whole DAO sector and crypto on the whole. And you are, or you have recently started to study for a doctorate in um, DAOs. But before we get onto that, let's let's speak more about you. So could you tell me um, how you got into crypto and what was your first experience with DAOs? Okay, well, how I got into crypto, I have to admit, it's, it's probably like most people with a financial interest. I was obviously uh, reading and following the Bitcoin and, you know, it, it went to $1, to $10, to $100. And it, it, it sort of piqued my interest as it did to a lot of people. So I have to admit, I've got into the blockchain via the Bitcoin, via a financial interest. Um, but as soon as you start scratching that surface, all of a sudden you realize there's a lot to the story of Bitcoin. There's a really deep, uh, motivated, driven narrative behind it. So I start reading the, um, the white paper. Um, and actually I read it a few times because the first time I, I couldn't really grasp or understand it. So it took me uh, a while to fully uh, understand it um, as far as I could. Uh, so this sort of piqued my interest. And, and, and to me, it also coincided actually with what we saw in society. And I don't think it's, it's, it's a coincidence that Satoshi Nakamoto launched the Bitcoin white paper after uh, the the, the financial collapse. I mean, it was an issue of of financial disaster. It was an issue of lacking of trust um, that resonated with so many people uh, all over the world that got us interested into blockchain and interested into uh, cryptocurrencies. And apart from the financial um, uh, interest for me, it was also an answer to a lot of societal problems we we then had and still have today. And I do believe that blockchain and decentralization and DAOs uh, could be in addition uh, to that uh, to those very problems. So that got myself interested into the blockchain and that's keeping me at, at, at the edge of my seat uh, till today. So along with that, you decided to start studying for a doctorate. And um, what exactly does that entail? And do you have a do you have a, a a background a background yourself within education or is it something a little bit out of your comfort zone? 
it's that's that's an interesting question. And uh, why I decided to pursue a doctorate to do a PhD in in decentralized uh, blockchain governance, to me was driven by the 2017 events. I was really excited to see that enormous bull run in in, in 2017. So okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Now we're getting somewhere. Now all of a sudden we're going to see blockchain become an intricate part of, of our of our lives and of our society. Um, what we also saw, unfortunately, was that the ICO craze that followed um, brought to light the the I would say the shadow side, I guess, of of, of crypto. People purely and exclusively financial driven and driven uh, for financial motives for themselves uh, and not shying away from scamming other people in order to make money. Um, that I thought was absolutely, um, and is absolutely disgusting. Um, and for me, that also proved the point that perhaps people don't understand or fully appreciate what the blockchain is and what decentralization is and can do for us. Um, so the, the lack of education in the ecosystem, in the community, sort of drove me towards uh, pursuing and starting a, a, a PhD. And um, my focus is on decentralized governance. You know, wh- what is governance? You know, you got you got technology, you got code, uh, you got people who have no ownership, and yet as a community, we somehow you know keep the whole thing going. So, what is it exactly that that keeps the blockchain going? What keeps people involved and motivated? Uh, in in contributing to to the blockchain, so getting a better understanding of that for us, for myself personally, and hopefully for the ecosystem at large, uh, was the big driver for me to start my my PhD. So, with your PhD, I, I'm assuming um, by the sounds of what you're saying is that it's more focused on the social aspects as opposed to the technical aspects. So, you're not um, particularly looking on how these sorts of uh, technologies are implemented, but more on um, how people interact with these DAOs. Is that about right? That, that's absolutely correct, uh, Crypto. You see. And I, I think if you look at what blockchain is, there are different roles and there are different skill sets. Um, obviously, a very important one is the programming. Uh, you know, writing the code. I think that's an extremely important, and the smart contract. That's an extremely smart component. Um, I I don't know the bits from the bobs and the bits from the bikes, uh, so to say. I know how it works, but I do not have a detailed level of understanding of how um, uh, how the technology. I know how the technology works, but I can't write the code. Uh, second, what we need is people who can can audit the code. Well, obviously, you need to be able to program in order to uh, do the auditing. There's also a level of expertise I'm not really that that sort of familiar with. Thirdly, I think you need people who can actually build business on top of it. Um, that, to me, is, is something I've done in my previous careers. I don't feel that motivated in, in, in doing that um, because that also involves actually a 24-7 uh, uh, approach and I'm, I'm not willing to make that commitment at this point in time. And then you've got actually a category of people who are the advocates for the blockchain. You know, what is the blockchain? How can we use it? How should we use it? What can it do for us? How can it make our lives better? How should we work for it? What are the opportunities we can see? How can we connect to uh, each other? How can we build a community? What is our ecosystem and how can we drive and further promote and stimulate the ecosystem. Well, that last part, that advocate role, is something I feel extremely comfortable and extremely passionate in. Um, and that combines a lot of things. That can mean you can write about it, you can talk about it, you can actually educate. Um, so the role of educator and advocate and, and, and promoter and community builder, I think is the role that actually suits me best. And, and it, it, the, the thing is that I'm, I'm not being dismissive of the technology far from it, but the blockchain is also something that, that works on merits, the meritocracy. And my, my merits 
do not lie in the technology component. They lie in, in the mobilization of the community, the engagement part, the advocate part. That's where I can add value and that's where I like to add value. So for me, it already sort of, you know, filtered each other out and, and we've got different roles that are needed in the blockchain ecosystem. And I have found my own role and I've found my own voice, uh, so to say. And um, part of my PhD is that I can also do teaching. And I sometimes give give lectures at university about blockchain, what it is. And and I find it really rewarding to educate and, and help motivate an enthusiast and a new generation of you know the, the bright minds of the future hopefully that can kick the can further down the road because we need to realize that we only just got started yes we are 20 years old as a blockchain you know it, it, it's it's a, it's a long trajectory already but the, the real future lies still ahead of us and we need a lot of more people in that community who think about it and want to work about it. So for me, being able to um, educate and help educate people in the university ecosystem is something I find very rewarding. So a long answer, Cryptosy, but <laughs> I find my role more in the advocate, uh, advocacy uh, part. Well, that was actually what my next question was going to be. It was going to be... Um how do you plan on using this qualification? But you've you've really you've um you've kind of gone over that that you you plan to share the knowledge <laughs> and to educate and to yeah. to make people more aware. Do you do you see yourself perhaps as um, maybe a bridge between the social layer of crypto and the technical layer of crypto, whereby I guess you could take on roles um, such as helping developers to build things in such a way that. Uh, it can align Absolutely. itself properly with correct DAOs. Okay, I want to move on, and I want to ask Absolutely. you about this. Oh, sorry. I want to ask you about this upcoming uh, bull run, which is what everybody really yeah. wants to know about, because that's when we all make loads of money. So how do you feel that DAOs will impact on this upcoming bull run? Yeah, that's that's... That's a really interesting question, and that that's not a question I can be uh, wholeheartedly enthusiastic about. Okay, you know this is the time that the DAOs will shine. Um, not not yet, I, I'd like to say. Um, well, we currently see that 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 you know Bitcoin is is, is waking up, scratching its hooves, um, just over thirty five k today. Um, so it seems to be that we we're in an upward uh, trajectory. Um, I guess for various reasons, to be honest, um, of some regulatory decisions in America with some geopolitical um, nervousness at the moment in the world. Uh, you see the same with, with, with gold, actually. Gold is at an uh, all-time uh, high again, um, uh, and Bitcoin is, is, is picking up. Um, but yes, we, it, it does seem that, that there is a bit, bit of movement in, in, in the market. And the first movers in the market are always, you know, the, the big and established, uh, coins, which, which would be the, you know, the Bitcoin, obviously, and Ethereum in its, um, in its path. After that, other project might, uh, might, might follow. Um, I, you know, when it comes to will the DAO be center stage in that bull run, um, I do believe that first of all, the, the, the more commercial oriented projects will, will benefit from, from a bull run. But I do expect and I'd like to see that pursuant to that, people think, okay, what's next? What, what's more available? What's more of an opportunity? And I think that's where the DAO would actually have a good opportunity to position itself and to manifest itself as, as the next thing. Um, also, you know, we also need to keep in mind that a DAO and, and bull run financial gain is, is, I'm not saying it's a contradiction in terms, uh, not that I'm, I'm offended with, with, with making money, uh, well, who is, uh, but we also, as a DAO, you know, we are in a way the, the blockchain version of a nonprofit. Um, um, so in that sense, financial gain is seen as an appreciation and attraction of a community uh, rather than a financial gain for the DAO itself. Uh, obviously, as a DAO, 
um, uh, has a treasury, they would obviously benefit and therefore the community would benefit of it. Um, but there's always a, a bit of ambiguity and uneasiness when you talk about the bull run and the Dow. Um, um, so come back to your question. Twofold, um, I think the Dow will, will be in the slipstream, so not, not center stage, but the slipstream. Um, and secondly, I think that, that a bull run will benefit the Dow uh, simply by having a better treasury and simply by being able to fund uh, more project and progress and do outreach uh, in their community. Do you feel that DAOs possibly are not ready uh, for this bull run? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely on the fence uh, with that. So um, it, it's, and, and again, you know, is, is the success of the DAO uh, measured in its, in, 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 in the token appreciation or the coin appreciation? And um, un- unfortunately, the answer is mostly yes. But you know, there's there's a big part of me that says, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be. It should be the, the the proof of community. That should be the, the yardstick. How are people involved and in participating in your DAO uh, and being actively uh, engaged in your project? That should be the the yardstick in which we we measure the success. But we tend to measure it. it it's uh, predominantly, if not exclusively, in in, in financial appreciation. So, um, so yeah, I always find that a bit of a, um, an ambiguous issue to to talk about, uh, and and I, I really haven't found the, the the perfect answer for that yet. I must say. So you you touched on something there about people's involvement within DAOs, and um, and and using that as a metric to measure the success of a DAO. I think that's quite an, an interesting thing as generally you speak to people within crypto and it's all about market cap and how much fiat money they've made. Um, yeah. If a person is listening to this or watching this show and they think, oh, you know, I really would like to get involved in DAOs, how can they get involved in DAOs? Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's a really important question because uh, you know, and I quickly come back to the, to the previous point of, of financial appreciation. Uh, financial appreciation is also often linked to to um, familiarity and and if people actually know about the project, so the awareness of the project. Uh, so that's that that's another issue. But once the project is on the radar, um, then there is still a barrier for people to join a project, to join a community. And, and to me, that's, that's where I see that, that advocate and ambassador role of myself is, is lowering the barrier because we are still predominantly too much, I think, um, as, as, as a nerdy, you know, tech, uh, programmers, uh, a group of people. And we're much more than that. We're selling ourselves short in, in, in positioning ourselves like that. So how can people get involved in DAOs? Um, well, go to podcasts like this one, uh, inform yourself, educate yourself, and simply ask questions. And, and that's how we all got started. And um, you know, when I got first interested in blockchain, there weren't that many podcasts. And there wasn't as much uh, people you could actually ask uh, uh, questions. Um, so, you know, enjoy actually and appreciate the opportunity that is at the moment that you actually can ask and get engaged into project. There are lots of um, things, uh, Ask Me Anything, AMAs. Uh, there are lots of podcasts. There are great tutorials uh, on YouTube like yourself. So definitely watch that, learn that, and then, you know, try to think of what you can do or how you would like to participate in it. So how can people get involved in DAOs? That's simply um, uh, learn yourself, get yourself familiar with the project, and also try to identify w- w- what you like. Um, and there's so many DAOs and so many projects with different focuses or, or with different um, areas uh, where they seem to focus uh, focus on. So also try to find out what 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 you uh, like um, to be in, in, important in 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 that part of uh, of, the, of the ecosystem. Um, how can you get involved? Simple. Just just try. Just 
join the community, go to Discord, go to Telegram, just read. And then finally, there's always a trigger or a little hook. Ah, that's interesting. I want to respond to that. Ah, I want to know more about it. Or actually, I know more about it. And that is how you slowly, slowly get in. You don't need to be straight away to center stage. If you want, by all means, please do so. Um, but you don't have to have that, that stage anxiety, uh, you know, a, just ease your way into it. And, and a, a good, a good DAO would actually appreciate it. A good DAO would give you the opportunity for that. And a good DAO would welcome and support you in that. Which leads me on perfectly. You're doing a great job of, of leading me from one topic to another. Thank you very much for that. So it leads me on a, a good DAO. So we've, we've discussed how we can um, measure a DAO's success. With that in mind, which would you say um, are the best DAOs in your opinion and why? I guess give me one or two that you really like and what you like about them. Okay, well, usually I, I try to stay away from naming and shaming um, uh, because I, th I think it's it, you know the, the effort behind it is is sometimes even more important than the actual results. Uh, but but having said that, I I think there there are luckily uh, plentiful examples of successful DAOs or DAOs that actually resonate or DAOs that actually uh, and engage with people. Um, I think in its, it is, its, its crudest, purest form, you could actually say that, that you know, the Bitcoin is, 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 a, is a DAO. We didn't name it DAOs yet, but you know, in a way you could say that it's a you know, decentralized collective uh, that is, is functioning thing well. Um, then you got obviously some DAOs who are, you know, in, in a specific niche, like in the financials. Um, I think, uh, uh, MakerDAO, uh, is an example of that or, or AVE or, or Uniswap. They facilitate actually, um, a really important part of the, the crypto ecosystem, namely focusing on, on liquidity and doing that in, in a DAO setting. Those kind of concepts I, I, I really find important. Um, second uh, group I would like to mention is the, what, what I call the, the, the facilitators. Um, they're groups, uh, the DAOs, um, who actually help you form a DAO or help you establish a DAO, help give you direction and help you organize structure a DAO. Um, uh, MeDAO, uh, the Marshall Island DAO, for instance, is, is an example of that. Um, uh, Aragon. Um, where you can you know, sort of build build your own or uh, Utopia Labs. You know, the, the facilitators, they help you um, um, jump over the barrier because there's still barriers there. So when I say that those are good good, good examples is they actually help you or, or break down a certain barrier. Uh, those those type of doubts, I think, are, are, are really nice and important. Um, but thirdly, you could say, well, anything really that's 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 really community driven um, is is something you could could get behind. And and uh, some of you know that I'm I'm involved have been involved with Digibyte. I've, I'm involved with with Pivx, uh, or with MetaBrands. I also think those community concepts really really resonate well with me uh, and really touch very close to what the DAO is and should be. Um. I've just got a question, actually. It's not it's not in the list of questions, so sorry. This one is off the cuff. But as you spoke about these uh, tooling, I guess we'd call it, the facilitators, yeah. you called it, like um, Aragon and MeDAO, how difficult actually is it for somebody to start yeah. up a DAO? Anybody watching this, would could they um, realistically, within, I don't know, a day or two, learn all of the things that they need to know to start up a DAO, or is it more involved than that? Does everybody have to become a doctor before they can start a DAO? Is the question really? No, absolutely not. And and I would definitely say um, um, no. First of all, uh, that I'm doing a PhD doesn't mean I'm smart. Doesn't mean I know everything about it. Doesn't mean uh, that I'm I'm your go-to guy. It just says that I'm willing to think about an issue. 
Uh, that's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. So don't give it more credit in that sense, much as I like to, uh, but don't give it more credit than it actually deserves. Um, secondly, I think also you should never, never, ever uh, see a mountain uh, of, of obstacles in front of you. Um, a little bit of knowledge is enough to make the next step. Then you regroup, think about it, process uh, process, and then you go to the next obstacle. So it's 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 really a, a, a simple way in moving forward. You do not need to be an expert. You do not need to be knowledgeable. You do not need to uh, cross all the T's and dot all the I's before you can actually uh, form a DAO. If you have that idea or that belief, if we all had that, nothing would have happened and we will be still living in caves at the moment. So no, explore, try, trial and error. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I do know that that a lot of the websites like like me down and there, they do have tutorials. There are lots of tutorials on, on, on YouTube as well. And they can guide you and help you as a facilitator, does facilitate you through that process. So no, don't see don't see obstacles, just see the opportunity and move along um, uh, as you go along. So don't don't make don't see insurmountable ob uh, obstacles in front of you. Just just grab the, uh, the opportunity and do it step by step. Okay, thank you. That's quite an inspiring answer, um, especially for me as I'm planning on starting my own DAO. So, what I would like to say is what. I'm going to rephrase this actually in light of your last question. I know you don't really want to name and shame DAOs, but what do you think are possibly um, some of the pitfalls that DAOs could have, some bad features that DAOs can have, or some things that DAOs should be trying to avoid that maybe slow them down or make them less safe or make them less efficient? Yeah. Well, uh, I think that sort of comes back to to one of the first, the, the first question you asked me, you know, what, 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 what what's my role in the, in the ecosystem and and to me you know I quickly re recap there were like four roles so the, the programmer the, the auditor uh, the, the builder of, of business and and the advocates and I, I, I think the, the, the programmer and the auditor um, you know auditor auditing is still the Achilles heel in blockchain is the killer's heel in DeFi. Um, we simply don't have the capacity, we don't have the resources, we don't have the right people uh, to do it. And yet, after a while, you always find a little backdoor or a, or a malfunction in the code. So it, it's not always necessarily malicious, but, uh, you know, auditing the code, making sure that it does what it says it does, offers you the protection it wants to, to give you, is not always guaranteed. Um, I'm not the person to do that audit. Uh, we've got companies to do that for us, but they also have waiting lists. Um, they are uh, expensive and time consuming. Um, uh, and they are unfortunately very important to prevent us from, from disasters. And, you know, you just asked me what, what's an example of a good DAO. You know, if you ask me what, what an example of a bad DAO is, is, is that, that people got, screwed uh be it in 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 emotionally be it in 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 a social construct be it financially if you actually got robbed or deprived from something you thought that was supposed to do and didn't happen actually on the contrary then i think that's an example of of what a dao should always always try to prevent and you know the dao hack of of, of 2016 for instance that's, that, that was a big thing. A lot of people lost a lot of money, um, and 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 losing losing money, frustrating people, uh, disengaging with your community, um, doing something or something that happens that is contrary to what you as a DAO want to do. I think is detrimental for for any DAO. Um, often that has a financial component, and and uh, again that also comes back to having a knowledgeable community, having an engaging community in a DAO. Because you know even in in Bitcoin itself, you know there was a double spending feature once. Um, someone from the community discovered there was a double spending feature. Rather than exploiting it, he contacted the Bitcoin Foundation, got a reward for that. The Bitcoin Foundation made an update, 
um, and then later announced there was a double spending feature being done. So that you know that all it's very important how the role of that community on that foundation uh, is in, in in that ecosystem to make it work. There are examples that it can actually work, but there are, and unfortunately there are also lots of examples that it it's it it completely completely um, um, uh, went off the rails. So it also boils down to ourselves, um, keep our eyes open and also uh, make sure that, that things are audited. I wanted to ask you something a little bit more, um, a little bit more personal, I guess, about your your personal political leaning. Now, in the UK, I'm not sure where you are in the world, but in the UK and definitely in the United States, we have uh, a very polarized political landscape at the moment between i guess the left and the right or the liberals yep. and the conservatives however you want to put it um you don't actually have to answer between us and but do, you, do you think it's important that your political leaning is one way or the other um do you think a political leaning, a particular political leaning, is more prevalent within DAOs? Is it more left wing, more right wing? Is there a mixture? Um, what are your views on that? Okay, well, I I, I agree with your assessment. It, it's an us and them uh, type of society um, all over the world. You, you you see that, and you know, we like to think that that's naively. Uh, or ignoringly that it's an American issue, but you know Americans do not have the exclusivity on a divided community or a divided political landscape. Um, talking politics uh, openly is sometimes close to you know public suicide. It's it's you you will get slaughtered and butchered for whatever you say, uh, and it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, if you say A or B, uh, black or white, uh, hot or cold, there's always a group that is offended if you have that answer. Um, so coming back to your question, um, how do I politically lean? I think it's important that people have political freedom to make choices and to have beliefs and that people should be respected uh, in their beliefs and in their choices. Um, and that, that is what some people call libertarian. Uh, so that, that is something I find an important principle in politics. And I also find that a principle that we are totally lacking today in, in, in our society. So that's, that's definitely, um, a, a big, a big thing. Um, I also believe fundamentally in the concept of, of, of reducing the, the, the role of the government. Um, I guess that's why I like decentralization so much because that's that's in in essence bringing down um, the decision making and the involvement process at to the lowest possible scale. Um, that can be peer to peer, but that's not always possible. But you can still do that community driven, for instance. So you know, once in 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 my lectures, I, I you know I, I give I, I start with a a, a question. Uh, is, you know, I want to put a solar panel on my roof. Um, do you think I can do that or do I need to ask permission? And then I don't live in Amsterdam at the moment. There are like 10 decision layers, you know, from, from the borough to, to, to the, the city, to regional, to uh, national, local, to uh, European, to United. There are like 10 different decision layers of people who can make a decision whether I can have a solar panel on my roof or not. You know, who do you think can actually make that decision? Can I have a solar panel on my roof? Well, personally, I think it should be just me. Boom, that's it, right? No one else. Um, unfortunately, the reality is different. They're different. They're like uh, endless number of people involved. So to me, decentralization is an important issue and reducing the role of government uh, is important. I think there's a role for government, uh, but we should define it very clearly. We should... should we should set clear boundaries uh, for what the government is and, and can do and should not do. Um, I think one of the things that happened in the 1960s is that people became very much independent. You know, the, the flower power, the hippie and the provo uh, movement uh, led to a strong individualization. It also 
took away the social fabric a bit of, of what society is and does, um, and also eroded in that sense the, the decentralization, which ultimately led to an extreme globalization. And now people see, okay, is that actually what we want? I, I live in Europe, our European Union becomes bigger and bigger. It's, you know, I, I like the idea of Europe. Um, the, the idea of European Union, I think, is, is not what I have in mind. Uh, uh, you know, that, so reducing the role of the government, decentralization, um, let people make their own choices and decisions and respect people's choice uh, uh, and, and decision, but also then own up to your choice and your responsibility. Um, so that would sort of be the, the, the political landscape I would like to, to see myself in. When it comes to, because um, if we're talking politics, I guess you can't say it without talking about um, clashing uh, idea ideologies or clashing views, let's just say. Within a DAO, how do you, Correct. how do you mitigate different people's different opinions on how things should be? Because it's, if you have a group of people, loads of people are going to have different ideas on how things should be. How do you mitigate those sorts of things within DAOs? Well, that's 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 an important that that's a crucial question, and that's that's more or less the essence of what a DAO is, uh, Cryptosi. And and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really glad you asked me that question uh, because I, again, that's that's the core of what a DAO is. Uh, how do we listen to each other? How do we compromise? How do we deal with differences? How do we deal with ambiguity? And how do we deal with differences of opinion? That solving that is what, what, what the DAO is, and um, uh, or to a large degree uh, is. And to me, it's important that we, again, respect each other's opinion and try to work collectively and together and come to a consensus. Um, but I also remember that in the 60s, when the hippies and the provos were there and singing Kumbaya along a campfire, that was all great, but nothing happened. So that's that's sort of the, 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 the paradox in a way. You want to work collectively uh, with a mutual understanding, but you also want to get something done because you do have a goal, uh, you do have an objective, you have a vision, what you as a DAO should do. Um, so... What can happen is obviously you can have a group who says, well, I totally disagree with decision A. You know what? We're leaving this DAO. We're forming our own DAO, a fork. So there is a perfect and, and, and perfect tool to mitigate that. Um, but in, in essence, I would like to see that the DAO can actually solve and overcome these handicaps and these barriers and these problems. Um, but there is always a fallback scenario for, for doing that. Um, but having differences of opinion, um, is, it, it, there's, there's more than that to it. I, I think in, in essence, you're asking, um, is there enough diversity uh, in, in, in DAOs in general? And then I would have to say the answer to me is no. Um, we would like to think that we are very open-minded and we share the same vision. Well, sharing the same vision is not necessarily the same of being diversified. Um, to me, we're still too much of the, the, the white male programmer. Uh, that's what that's what the community is. Go to any conference, go to any event. You see guys between 20 and 35. Um, that's, that's what the community is. And it's much more than that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in that sense, um, uh, perhaps even like you, uh, an outliner in that community. You know, I'm, I'm an old man with gray hair. You know, what, what can you actually be in the community? Um, so is our community diversified enough? No, not yet. Um, uh, we see it in lots of, um, in, in lots of aspects from certain countries. Um, uh, the, the gender uh, mix is, is completely awry in, in the community. So I would like to see our community actually much more progress and evolve and become much more a representation of what we are um, in, in the outside world. Um, and then we are really going to test the boundaries, the effectiveness, um, and also the, the, the limits of what a DAO is, is and can do. And personally, I just can't wait to see it happen. 
that's an interesting, definitely an interesting topic, certainly for me on a personal level, about the diversity within crypto, within DAOs in particular. How do you think um, we can increase that diversity um, along all sorts of lines, racial, age, gender, all sorts of lines? Um, do you think it's just a matter of time or do you think that there are actually steps that we can go through to try to increase that, um, I shouldn't say as quickly as possible, but to try to make the change? Well, that's 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 a classic example of chicken and egg. And I, I know the people who say, well, you know, we, we, are, we, we are open, um, we're limitless, anyone can join, anyone can participate. So, you know, it's up to them to join us. Um, that I think is way too short, and that I think is 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 a simply not fair answer. Um, uh, does the mountain does Muhammad come to the mountain, or does the mountain come to Muhammad? And I think both, and that's why I like to focus so much on education. I think it's important. Education to me is also outreach, engage and interact with communities that actually have um, and not necessarily been involved uh, in the ecosystem, make sure they have an opportunity to be represented, make sure they have an opportunity to get the education level and make sure that they become involved in the ecosystem. That I find extremely and crucial and important. And, and to me on a personal level, I think that can only be the success. You know, it, it cannot be a success is only great if it's celebrated by the many, not by the few. And, and, and having Having a, a, a blockchain that is successful and has a good um, financial repre representation is great. But if you have a, a very small interaction uh, of a community, a very one-sided community, then ultimately, you know, it, it'll 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 dry out. Uh, so I think it's extremely important that we, uh, as a community, uh, not only open the doors but actively almost recruit. Uh, other parts of, of, of demographics. Um, and um, I've done a few AMAs um, in, 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 uh, for, for a uh, community in Africa, for in Kenya, for instance, uh, which is an extremely big uh, uh, crypto-driven community. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't dismiss the fact that, that Crypto is also an opportunity for people to become financially included, become financially independent, to become financially responsible. Um, so crypto has a, a great opportunity. And it, it reminded me a bit of, of when I start, started working for at and T in, in the in the mid and early 90s that um, they wanted to branch out to, to what we now call Eastern Europe, Eastern European countries, because they didn't have that, that, that big, telecommunication networks and a lot of countries actually switched to mobile straight away because that was a lot easier and it also all of a sudden opened the, literally the world of opportunities for a lot of people crypto and blockchain has exactly that um opportunity uh, for a lot of countries and and that's why i feel we need to focus on 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 outreach to communities that that have a specific need and could specifically benefit from this great opportunity called blockchain. And it is our responsibility to make sure that we are as inclusive as we say as we say we are as a community. Powerful, powerful words, Hans. Thank you very much. Um, before we wrap up, I, I really want to give people a chance to find out more about you and your work. So where can people go to find about find out more about you, the things you may be working on and uh, and just more about yeah, more about you. Yeah. Well, I, I got my footprint in, in most social media. Um, uh, but if you look at, at, at Twitter, for, uh, like uh, uh, Telegram, for instance, I mean, that to me is, is you know, it's like a new Facebook. It's like way too busy. I'm, I'm not using that that often anymore. Uh, Twitter I use, um, uh, at Hans Kooning. That's, that's actually simple. Uh, Discord I do like most people, um, under an alias. Uh, so that I get, get the better idea of, of traction in that community. And I'm a bit old school in that sense. I do have a good profile on, on LinkedIn, um, uh, which I, I use, um, because I also see that as a good, 
a bridge towards academia and a bridge uh, toward conferences and other um, areas where I can have that ambassador, ambassador, ambassador uh, or advocate uh, role. Uh, so Twitter and LinkedIn are sort of my, uh, my favorite uh, uh, choices of social media in that sense. Awesome. Khans, thank you very, very much for your time. It's been um, brilliant. I'm so glad, so glad that I had you on first. I've learned a whole bunch. So thank you very much. I hope, I hope um, other people have enjoyed this chat as much as I have. For the people watching, I need to go through all this stuff. Make sure that you like and subscribe and click the thumbs up icon and comment any questions that you do have for Hans. Leave them in the comment section below and then i will see if i can get him to answer them i'm not sure hans are you on youtube much as of my year i'm i'm a watcher i don't have my own channel uh, uh yet i i think i actually might do that because it it's you know i talk about education i talk about outreach so i think a youtube channel should uh, should be part of that so that's um i'll put it on my to-do list for um for this year excellent all right then hans thank you very much for joining us thanks everybody for watching and um i've been cryptosi this has been dow watch fireside with our first host who soon will be um I'm, i don't know if you'll be the world's first maybe the world's first dow doctor so if you're if your dow is um a bit under the <laughs> weather he should be the guy you should call hans thank you so much absolutely my pleasure thank you so much for having me